Pokemon Scarlet and Violet released in late 2021, and we never saw an official strategy guide release for them, in English at least. There's a few unofficial guides which yield mixed results, so I decided to go out of my way and get the official Japanese guide for Pokemon Scarlet and Violet. This guide is over 500 pages long and covers everything we need to know about traveling across the Paldea region, and even has a very page. The only issue is, it's all in Japanese, so we have to crudely translate each individual page with my phone like this. It's not ideal at all, or very accurate for that matter, but yields some funny results and still kind of works. Pokemon's names are messed up of course, attacks are messed up, and as you can imagine, most translations aren't very accurate. The introduction pages have a few funny translation errors, like calling Terrasilization Terrace Pokemon, and calling Pokemon Pocket Monsters a lot, which is what they're called in Japanese anyway, but it still explains all the basics needed to play a Pokemon game. I can go on and on for this intro part for a while, but let's just skip ahead to the prologue section and see if we can beat Pokemon Scarlet and Violet how Nintendo intended. The prologue begins on page 214 and caused some confusion for me. Basically, we have to follow the prologue, which takes us through Mesagoza, then the story section on a separate part of the guide, which is a general walkthrough, then another separate section outlining the gym leader battles, Team Star, and the Titan Pokemon, and finally another section that details each individual area a bit more. It doesn't help that these all spread across about 500 pages or so in the book, so we have to do a lot of flipping back and forth. First, the guide tells us to customize our trainer by choosing our love from among the seeds. Since we're playing Scarlet version, I of course give our characters Scarlet hair, then the guide tells us how in Scarlet version we go to Orange Academy, and in Violet version we go to Grave Academy. The translations messed up the terminology pertaining to Violet version a lot more compared to Scarlet version, as sometimes it was Grave Academy or Grape Academy, and sometimes it was Violet version or Violet version. Aside from the broken English because I translated this guide in the worst way possible by just holding my phone up to the guide and using Google Translate, the prologue is pretty straightforward. We meet our classmate, Nemo, then we get to choose a Pokemon to be our partner. Earlier on in the guide it has three different sections for each starter leading up to the second gym with a slightly different route for each. To be honest, I kind of forgot about this when I started playing the game because they were within the first 20 pages of the guide, but I picked Quaxly simply because it's a duck. I name it Quasa because that's what the almighty beings at Google decide to translate Quaxly into. Normally I name my starter Pokemon subscribe to remind people to subscribe as it helps the channel a ton, although a small amount of viewers get really upset when YouTubers remind viewers how liking and subscribing can help out their channel, so I'm just not going to do that I guess. Little Cook Nemo also chooses his own Pokemon, and I didn't know that Nemo wanted to be a cook. It's fitting because she ends up with the fire type Pokemon, Pogeta, and for some reason the translation for a lot of pronouns just defaulted most of them to him, even for the woman characters. Nemo does happen to choose the Bakmon, whose type is compatible with the main character's cancerous types. Whenever the translation says cancerous type, it just means super effective, which is another extreme example, but it kind of makes sense. Shortly after battling Chef Nemo, our mom gives us an allowance and a sandwich as well as five wound healers which is another funny translation for an item in this guide. Chef Nemo then gives us some monster balls and shows us how to catch a Pokemon. We end up catching a Lechonk this way so I of course crudely translate Lechonk into Jimben Gletton and nickname it that. After that we save Karadon, or if you're on Pokemon Payovlet, Maridon. After saving Karada, we meet Pepper, the doctor's son, who battles us with his only Pokemon being the Fox Squirrel. Now it's time to leave for school and go through Rat Town, battle Chef Nemo again, and go to Table City. Nemo talks about how her goal is to become the champion, and attending Mesagoza is the first step, and since the year just started, it's a great time to work on yourself too. For me personally, I've been trying to spend less time at my computer since there's days where I'm just sitting here all day, which isn't great for my mental health. That is where BetterHelp, the sponsors for today's video, are here to help. BetterHelp offers therapy online, making it easier and less intimidating than going in person. You can schedule your appointments as a phone call or a video chat or just via messaging. Whatever is the most comfortable version of therapy for you. BetterHelp has over 30,000 therapists in their network so they can match you with a therapist based off your needs and preferences. To get started, you fill out a questionnaire that asks you about the challenges you're going through and what kind of therapist you would like, and BetterHelp can match you with a therapist to help you. In most cases, you'll be matched within just 48 hours, and in case you feel like your therapist isn't a fit for you, you can switch at no additional cost. Join over 4 million people who've used BetterHelp to start living a healthier and happier life with my link in the description, or go to betterhelp.com slash Clicking that link helps support the channel and also gets you 10% off your first month of BetterHelp so you can connect with a therapist and see if it helps you. Thanks again to BetterHelp for sponsoring this video. We then go through the basic school stuff which include let's stand at the school and pay taxes. Then we finally finish the prologue and move on to the actual gameplay. The first place we need to go to is Circle Town through South Area 2. 
The guide highlights some Pokemon we can catch in this area, including Caster Nuts, so of course I catch one adds to the team, and even outlines every trainer, which is pretty convenient. It was a short trip to Circle Town, or Serukuru Town, which sounds a lot like Circle, but with more Japanese. The guide outlines everything you can do here, which it does for every area, including this trade you can do with the full Bebe for a Snob. I tried to find a full Bebe, but couldn't, so I just gave up on it. And once our Pokemon got to level 14 or 15, I challenged Cade's team of Murray type Pokemon. We have to flip over to the section on gym leaders now and see that Katie's team has a bean grasshopper on it. A regular grasshopper isn't an issue, but a bean grasshopper? Those are trouble. At least our Quas has wing attack to take care of her bug types, and we can see which types are good against each Pokemon next to her team on the team list. It does tell us about her Sudowoodo, who terraces into bug type, but was still no match for our Quas. This gives us our first gym badge, a TM, and for some reason, there is a bulge. Quas evolved shortly after the fight, so we head on over to Area 3 where we learn about special terrorist Pokemon that emit milk like this Jigglypuff. I really wanted to try some Jigglypuff milk, but I accidentally knocked it out and couldn't catch it. There's also Nushi in this area, which has a secret spice that we should approach later. The secret spice is referring to the Cloth Titan, of course, which also has its own section we need to flip on over to. I'm not usually a fan of guides make you flip back and forth, but with how open Scarlet and Violet is, it makes sense to have it done this way. And it's only extra annoying for me because I have to translate the pages every time. The guide suggests water and grass moves for Cloth, which we have on our Quas and Caster Nuts, and one of its moves got loosely translated to I'm excited, which gave me a laugh. After meeting Arvin, our Karadon eats a sandwich and learns how to dash, making it to our next destination, Bull Town. Here we have to find 10 Kimowari to challenge the gym, which took me a couple of minutes to find. Then we fight Corsa's Gym of Grass types. The guide suggests fire and flying types and to use the clicky move, which I'm going to assume is just wing attack. This does well for his first two Pokemon. Then our Quas falls, leaving just our Jibble Jetin, I still have no idea how to pronounce this thing and our nuts. We lose this fight, so I level up the team a bit more, decide to look for a fire type, and even see a fire terror raid which I go in to try, and it ended up being a Flabebe after I spent about 20 minutes looking for one earlier. Since it has no fire moves, I go back to trade it for the Snom Nate's nose a lot, level it up, and challenge the gym again. This time, Snom takes care of his first two Pokemon pretty easily, then we use Quas to weaken Sudowoodo, and have to do some cheese strategy by reviving Quas so we can beat Brassius, or should I say Corsa, for our second gym badge. At this point, I tried to reorganize the entire guide by saving a picture of each page after translating them, then rearranging them in the order that I'd see them in as we go through the game, and let's see if that works out. I had to sort about 300 pages, which took over two hours, mainly because, well, I don't know how to read Japanese, but I think in the long run, it'll be worth it. Next, the guide wants us to take on the Sky Starfish, or the Bombardier Titan. To do that, we need to go through Area 1 first. The guide mentions how the star group is around here and also some wild terrorist Pokemon like Sanders. I like Sanders. On the area guide section for Bombardier, it says, let's fight the soybean Nushi Mandarin Duck, which sounds a lot like a dish you'd order at some sort of Asian restaurant. The guide suggests we use Electro-type Pokemon here against the Mandarin Duck, although we don't have any and it's a shame because Sanders would have been perfect here. I also forgot to heal, so the first fight didn't go so well against the soybean duck, so I heal and do much better on the second time. As for its moveset, it's hard to make out since I couldn't really take the best pictures of these crew translations, but for its moveset, it looks like it just says, Subaki makes me depressed. But what doesn't make me depressed is seeing LeChonk evolve. After beating the Titan and meeting Arvin, the guide says, when you give Bavar's sandwich, Kaleidmon. Sometimes Arvin is referred to as Bavar, and Maradon and Karadon's names just keep getting more and more messed up the farther along we go. Our next point is to tackle the first Team Star base with Pinya. And this is a rush. Let's open 30 stores in 10 minutes of the new time and bring out the POS. And then on the Team Star section, it calls him Akugumi. One cool thing about the Team Star section is it shows recommended Pokemon for the first part of the battle. And when one of the recommended Pokemon is called Bean Grasshopper, you know I had to go out of my way to catch one. For the actual fight against Giacomo, we have a low sweep on Quaxwell, which is just better than our Bean Grasshopper as it died almost instantly. I thought we were going to lose this, but Oink alone bails us out, so now we can check out the east first area. The bottom is connected to the east Baldea Sea, Eri, Starfire Box, and Team Adele's hideout are set up in most of Middle England. That's just another reason to never go to England, but along this route we have Team Shadal Maroko and her fire base. The guide shows how she looks in each version, which is almost exactly the same in both games, except for this one small detail on her hip, as well as some Pokemon that we can catch that are good here like Cam Cam. I wonder where Cam came from, or what Cam came to. Maybe. I couldn't find Cam, so I just settled for a Weasel, which when translated is still just Weasel, which surprised me. I decided to grind a bit before doing this, because I was underleveled. 
And I later realized that while reorganizing the guide, I accidentally put Mela a little too early. So this being out of order is my fault and not the guide's fault. I did wind up catching a Charcadet though because they're cool and the guy translated them to Glen Alba, so welcome to the team Glen. I'd posit it's Nom for it because Nom hasn't been that good outside of that one gym battle. And as annoying as it was to find a Flabebe, I find another den with another Flabebe to taunt me even more. Weasel ends up evolving to Floatzel though, and along with our starter Pokemon being water type, we make Moroko's base go by in two shakes of a lamb's tail. The next stop on our adventure is Hako City, a seaside town with an electric gym. I could have sworn that Hako was a type of fish or something, but I looked it up and apparently Hako is a company that makes equipment for electricians, which still is a fitting name for this city. There's a ton to do here like battle the streamer Nanjimo, which the guide should just go say Pokemon for. So since we can trade the Ocean Sea Urchin for a Pokemon that is literally named Ghost, I do that and Ghost evolves into a fatter ghost. Nice. Before battling Iono, we encounter Chef Nemo again, who must be here to check out all the restaurants. She wants to battle us, and ends up having a Pokemon named Principal on her team. The guide also calls Iono Yamo, then says, as is typical for Nanjimo, a popular video distributor, the battle court is displayed on digital signage. I guess I'm also a popular video distributor of sorts, distributing a video right now that you're watching. Fascinating. Now for the actual gym, we are a little bit overleveled, so we're going to take care of most of our team with Dig until her Terramus Magius, which Gengar just curses and eventually knocks out. I don't think I've ever used Curse to win a battle before, but there's a first for everything, I guess. Now the guide wants to do the Earthworms and fight the next Nushi Pokemon. We travel through East Area 3 to get there, and our Bean Grasshopper evolves and is slowly becoming one of our better Pokemon on the team. This takes us to the Submerged Deal Noshi, which doesn't sound nearly as appetizing as the Mandarin Soybean Duck Nushi before it. For the fight, the guide suggests Jimin type, but unfortunately I'm not part of a Korean boy band, so that won't work. We just slowly whittle away at the worm to defeat it with Bavar, who teaches our Maridon how to do the big jump, which causes damage. Our next destination is Picket Town, a small town specializing in minerals, which I'm sure Hank Schrader would love. The guy tells us how we can give materials to people who are still alive for special tools like the chest plates to evolve Charcadet. I'm glad the guy told us this, otherwise I would have tried to give materials to people who weren't alive. There's not much else to do in this town since you really don't have to go here to beat the game at all, so we can continue to the Roasted Desert for Kaskarafa Town and fight the Earthquake Titan along the way. I misread the guide, which happens a lot when it's written in a language that you don't understand, and we actually aren't supposed to fight the Earthquake Titan yet. So after getting stomped by it, I go right for Kaskarafa City, or Karafe City as the guide calls it. Here we can get tools at Delibird Pouch, get the big root item for Caster Nuts, don't you forget about Caster Nuts, as well as the leftovers before meeting Kofu who heads to Marinade Town. Marinade Town is the town of notice, and let me tell you, I definitely noticed this town. Here we need to bid on some seaweed for Kofu, then fight against his water type foes. If you concentrate on hitting the points, then victory is at hand. It suggests electric moves, but sadly we never caught Sanders' help with that, so we have to use our nut and the guide says how his Pokemon are weak to grass. Unfortunately our nut falls early, so we have to use some Gengar Curse Cheese for the second time in a row to get this gym badge. Next we have to travel through the West Third area to Shambles Town, or Champel Town, a retro town with a normal type gym. It says how it has a nostalgic atmosphere, and among the main Amaya Tsune Maya restaurants, only 18 have grilled rice balls on their menu. I don't really know what that means, and I don't even know if I said that correctly. For the gym fight in this town, we have to battle Aoki, an extraordinary office worker. I grind up the team a bit so Kwasi evolves, and mainly use it along with our Bean Grasshopper against Aoki and his normal type Pokemon. The fight was pretty easy, and as we exit the gym we see Chef Nemo, who is probably checking out all the rice balls nearby, and fight her with her Loud Bone Guild. The next place we need to go to is Mount Nape, which leads us to Fridge Town. Funny enough, the Fridge Gym isn't Grusa's gym, but it's Rhyme's ghost type gym. On the way, I called a Fridgeback named Servier because that's the very loose and inaccurate translation for it, and added to the team over Chargadet because I haven't really been using it. Rhyme, or Lime as the guide calls her sometimes, is a double battle gym which isn't too hard for our Gengar and Bean Grasshopper. I think I only took one hit in this entire fight against Rhyme. So now that we have her badge, we can head on over to Caliph City's Snake Roast and become the Earth Nushi. That was a weird way to put it, but it's just the giant Donphan Titan fight. It was much easier this time around that we battled it when we're actually supposed to. And then it says, that's how the soil grows. In the Roasted Desert, we can also fight Cigar Loco, which is the greatest name for Pokemon I've ever seen, and a snubber, but I hardly know her. With the giant Donphan out of the way, we can go to Bait Cavi near South Area 6, where there is no luck. 
We continue along to Big Town, and at this point I realized I accidentally skipped the Poison Team Star Base, but we were supposed to do that quite a while ago. I went back and beat it very easily, as the guy didn't really say all that much about it. So now we can go back to Big Town, which is a stylish town with an Esper-type gym. Chef Nemo fights us again, and after that we can get ready to challenge the gym by pressing the emotional buttons. For the fight against Tulip, or just Rip as the guide calls her, Bug, Grasshopper, and Gengar take care of her team pretty easily. Either way, we can make it to Grusha, or Blusa's gym next pretty easily. The guide recommends fire types, and we just got rid of our only fire type we had, but the gym battle was still pretty easy for us as fighting Pokemon are super effective against ice types. After Grusha, we have Team Ruckbar's hideout with Ortiga and the Fairy group. The guide does still recommend specific Pokemon for this Team Star fight, and it recommends unevolved Pokemon that wouldn't even be good here, so I just don't even use them and use the team that I already have. This gives us another Dan badge, and the move Dazzling Gleam or Magical Shine. For some gym badges, usually the Team Star ones just called them Dan badges. Now we have to take on the last Nushi in Oha Lake, where a huge dragon dog lurks. Here we talk to the fake dragon Nushi to make our face smaller, and see that Tatsugiri has an attack called What's Up Ryu. I don't even know what that move is really supposed to be, but after defeating it, Arctobox evolves to back Excalibur, and then we have to take on the final Team Star base. It's Team Calf's hideout where we have to tell them about 30 Pokemon within 10 minutes. She has a Pokemon called Skull Dragon, which isn't exactly what you'd expect, as it's really just a Poison Frog Pokemon, and we had some trouble here too, and got to a point where I thought we'd lose, but Caster Nuts wins it for us to get our final Gym Badge, before we take on the Elite Four. The guide refers to the Elite Four as the Four Heavenly Kings, or Top Champions, which sounds really cool. First up of the Four Heavenly Kings, we have White Lord's Chili. The guide says how chili is a convenient type of food, which I guess is true because you can get them at a Wendy's drive-thru. It also says how Chilean Pokemon can learn many grass moves, and I had no idea there were Pokemon from Chile. After Chili, we have Poppy, or Bobby, a Steel-type user. Her team wasn't too bad for us since we have a lot of Fighting-type moves. After that, we fight Aoki of the Four Heavenly Kings, and it suggests ice types we use back Excalibur. Aoki has an odd dolly and a Kalamingo, which is a really cool sounding name for a Pokemon. Fourth up is Hisaku, who has this weird sideways text next to him saying, in between being able to see quickly, it was far beyond my imagination. It's. We can use our back Excalibur for him, but if you look at his team, his back Excalibur was very poorly translated to the words sex, followed by a very bad word I don't think I can say on YouTube. I have no idea how that could have happened. But with that out of the way, we have to fight the top champion, Omadaka. Her Pokemon are weak to a variety of thieves. Our team matches up pretty well here, and once we defeat her, we can head on back to Table City to play Nemo with Nemo. We do as the guide says and exploit her weaknesses to complete the champion's road. After Chef Nemo, we fight Bavar with our six Beppas to clear the Legends route. Then we fight Clavels of normal Pokemon and battle the Star Buttons, who has a Sanders. Penny has all the evolutions except for Glaceon, and with that, we clear out the Stardust Street missions. This unlocks the final Homeway missions, where the guide keeps saying something about Button. I'm not sure if Button is supposed to be Arvin or Penny or a person even, or what they mean by it, but we keep going until the Doctor's voice greets us, make it to the Cello Lab, and cooperate with Nemo to defeat Pokemon. This section says no Suga, however, strangely referencing another K-pop singer by accident, and eventually we get to a point where the Doctor is acting weird. Here we finally meet what, and this picture was blurry, which messed up the translation even more, but it says, but it's not a box, but a robot that moves in a box. Then we fight the AI professor with a salmon tail on her team. After defeating her, the anti-drug program is activated, initiating the Karadon fight where we have a Karadon honor battle. I don't think it's possible to lose this fight so we win, save the world or whatever, and beat Pokemon Scarlet and Violet how Nintendo intended. This one was a bit weird to make as we had to work with a very poorly translated guide. It made for some funny moments, but I can't accurately judge the guide just based off of this. Outside it seemed like a pretty solid guide outside of all of the flipping back and forth that needed to be done, it's just a shame that we don't see these guides released in English anymore, and the last time we saw an English guide released was for Sword and Shield. Some people have pointed out to me that there are English guides for this game out there, but they aren't official guides and the quality of them is a bit spotty. We did look at one of these unofficial guides on Amazon for Brilliant Diamond and Shining Pearl, which had a lot of weird stuff in it too, but I still prefer the official guides. This Nintendo video took much longer to make than others because of all the translations, so if you want to support the channel, consider leaving a like and subscribing, and consider going the extra mile becoming a YouTube channel member. I'd really appreciate it. With all that out of the way, thank you so much for watching, have a great rest of your day, I'll see you all next time, and bye bye.